All right, we're back at Steve's. It's Monday, the 3rd of October. Time's running out for us to get renovation done. So while the weather's good, I'm going to do a mini one. I'm going to scarify it with the outlet, scarify an attachment, and then we're going to get some product on, and then we're going to get this one ready for the autumn coming and the winter ahead. So join me in a sec when we'll do that. But first of all, we've got a worm issue to deal with. So let me show you how I've been dealing with that so far this year. All right, so I just mentioned we've got a worm cast issue. It's not as bad as normal, but that's just because maybe the weather's been very dry, so they've not really come up yet. It's not been very wet, but I anticipate once the weather turns and it goes really wet, that we're going to get a real bad infestation. So what is a worm cast? When the worm comes up to the surface, takes organic matter back down, leaves, twigs, whatever else it takes down, thatch and stuff, eats it, mixes it all up in his stomach, comes back up to the surface and then ejects that out of its mouth. In one way it's bad because it obviously it's detrimental to the law in terms of its aesthetics, but that uh, cast there is teeming with bacteria and fungus from the worm's stomach. So it's good in one set because we can put that in a brew and we can make some really good biology with that. But from a, a law and aesthetic point of view, it's not very good. So what I do is, what I've been doing is, you can if you want, if you've just got the odd one or two, you could get a garden fork, get the old trusty fork out and just pick it up. But if you've got under those, it's, it's not going to work. So the best tool I found this year, because the grain's been so dry and they're bringing up quite a dry mix, if they're really stodgy and they're, and they're clayy, then this isn't going to work. But for me, a blower at the moment is doing the job. So let me just show you how I, how I work it. And I just blow them away and then blow them off the lawn and then I do the rest and then we'll get on with the sky fire. But if we don't do that first, all we're going to do is the front roller of the cylinder mower is just going to flatten it and it's just going to create a dead spot. And then we grattis can get in, weeds, etc. And just generally make the lawn look really naff. So I'll crack on with the rest and then I'll join you back shortly when we're ready to go on with the sky fire. Right, so here's a worm cast on the neighbour side, like on Steve's lawn, which is connected to this one. This side's really clayy, and I didn't put as much uh, root zone on here because it, it didn't warrant it because of the way it gradients up. But you can see that worm cast is really soily and wet and sticky. Now these are the ones that are the ones that we're talking about, the problematic ones, which don't clear. So there's nothing much we can do with them other than do our best and then we maybe get like, um, I've not got my garden, my trusty fork with me today because I put it in my pocket and I took it home and I forgot to put it back in my pocket on my clean trousers so we can then just get it and fluff it up and just make sure that grass is not all pressed down because that's when you start getting the dead patches. So I know we're going to go over it with a scarifier in a sec so that will squash it back down but I'm just showing you what we can do maybe after the event. Uh, so I'll maybe come back and address this one. But so far, that's the only one we've got, which is the problematic one. Right, so I'm just about to go on with the alert. I've got the scarifying attachment in. I've got it set as low as I can. I've just done a little test run here and it's absolutely fine. We'll just do one pass. I don't think it's that bad that it requires two. And it's a bit damp down this bottom end because all the water gathers here when it rains. So we'll just do it once. Once we've cleaned all that out, our fertiliser that we put in is going to get in a lot quicker and it's going to act as a bit of an aerator as well. So let's crack on. All right, so I've just completed the left side and look at what we've brought up, a full box of horrible necrotic growth. And there's not even that much grass in there. You know, normally in the summer, there's a bit of thatch and there's a bit of side shoots as well, like really healthy grass. But today, 
it is literally just all horrible, sweaty, necrotic growth. And if we leave that in there in the winter, that is just a breeding ground for disease. So getting it out now and getting some fertiliser on and get some new grass growing just before the autumn really kicks in, we're going to be in a good position. Also, I've been putting my reduce on, which has stopped the dew forming in the morning. That is making a hell of a difference because by now I've normally got fusarium. So this year, really paying dividends putting that on because I'm not having to worry about coming and the condensation creating like a greenhouse effect. And that is, uh, again, another breeding ground for disease. So, so far, so good. So let's go and do the other side. All right, so the other side is no exception. It's a smaller lawns, so we've not got as much in there. But I think we've been able to keep on top of this more this year because we started that side a bit later. So that probably explains why there's less in there as well. So what I'll do now is I'll get the hater out and we'll go and hoover what this didn't pick up, although there isn't much. It's just when you turn, you just get a bit being left behind on the roller. And then we'll cut that on number two. The good thing is this year, because I kept it short with the cylinder, I can still go on that on number two with the hater and it doesn't scalp. So today is no exception, and then we'll get on with some products. So let's go and sort it out. All right, looking absolutely spot on. Products now. Even if we didn't put products on, the customer would know we'd been, which is always good. And they know they're not wasting the money. And this side, I did start filming, but I came back to press stop and it hadn't worked, so you missed this one. So I just did that side for you. But again, this one's looking spot on. And as soon as Steve pulls up, he's going to know bin and know something drastic's happened because it wasn't like that when he left this morning. So, time to get on with some uh, granular fertiliser next. So let's go and sort it out. Right, so got my autumn punch ready to go on behind me. What is it? It's a granular fertilizer. It's a 649 MPK with added calcium, magnesium, and iron. The magnesium and the iron are giving us a great color and a bit of little moss control, and the calcium is gonna help our cell wall stay really strong. Now the MPK side of it is your 649. That is your nitrogen, your phosphorus, and your potassium. Those are what we call macronutrients, what the grass needs most of, whereas the other calcium, magnesium and iron are called micronutrients. So what we're going to do now is go on, put that on. I've double striped it, as you saw, so I've got guidelines. I'm going to go on, number 32. I've got a few bags with me, so if I run out, it doesn't matter because I've got top up. So I'm just going to get an idea of what this spreader does and uh, what the results are going forward. So let's start. And just a reminder that when you've applied any fertilizer with iron in it, it's important to go around and either blow the granular off the path or sweep it up because if it gets wet, it'll stain and you'll get orange dots everywhere. So always blow or sweep, never hose it down because what you'll do is you'll just activate it and it'll just sit there and then you'll end up with the orange stains again. Okay, so we're just ready to spray on our concoction of products. What have I got in my tank? We've got Stella, which is a biostimulant, which is going to give that seaweed just to keep everything ticking over nicely. We've got our Grace in there, which is going to get rid of any free radicals, nothing about it, which are oxidised cells, so they get knocked out of the equation because they're going to run around the planet inside doing untold damage, just like in the human body. And I've got the winter products in there, which I've just brought out, the Orbit and the GMS 67. Orbit is a molasses-based product with beeswax extract which is going to give us the most out of the sun because it increases photosynthesis. We know this side particularly doesn't get much sun in the winter, so whatever we can put on to eke that little bit more out of it is a good thing. And then we've got the GMS 67, which is calcium bonded to nitrogen, which is going to give us that cell wall strength going into the winter to protect ourselves from disease and stress. So, time to spray.
Okay, so that's the job list over and done with for today. I don't need to do anything now this time of year. I don't need to worry about getting the hose pipe out because rains always do. Tomorrow, that is, because I want that orbit and that GMS to sit on the leaf for an hour anyway, just so the plant can take it in that way and then the rest will get washed in to the roots. So I'm really looking forward to see the results on this one because I think it's going to be something special. So until we meet again, take care and we'll see you when we're doing something else lawn related. So see you then.